Hi, everybody. Um, I had some questions being asked of me of that I talk a lot about pondering, which is what Gurdjieff often says, ponder, verify for yourself everything. You know, we don't want to be told what to do. But we can be guided. But we need to, what we're learning from people or learning from others or what we're picking up for ourselves in our you know, struggle to fathom the gist, we need to ponder upon. And I've had people saying to me, why do I need to ponder on it? Why do I not just get the answer straight away? And I used to feel that. Why aren't we just downloaded it and given it straight away? Well, I think we need to ponder on it to make it work in all our centres. Otherwise, you might only be pondering on it with the mind or maybe with just the emotions or, you know, I'm sure you can ponder with the body. So that's why things need to be pondered upon. You're just thinking... We don't want to be thinking in a one-brained way. We want to be thinking in all three centres. So pondering makes that them energies come together so they all work together. And I'm going to do some quick quotes here from... Um, well, actually, I'm going to start with Charles Knott and his book. Because he says, and I'm going to be quoting here, it is necessary to ponder everything that Gurdjieff says to learn and prepare yourself. And then there was a question, what is pondering? Arad replied, from one aspect, it is thinking with the thinking part of each centre, mental, emotional and moving. Mary pondered all these things in her heart. It means to go over them, weigh them. And I want to remind everybody what Gurdjieff discusses about the centres. So we've got the thinking centre, emotional centre outside the plexus and our moving centre, instinctive centre. But in all them centres, there is again... Let's take, for example, the thinking centre. That thinking centre is divided into three again. It's got a thinking, thinking centre, a thinking, emotional centre, and a thinking, instinctive centre, or bodily centre, moving centre. And the same with the emotional centre. That's got divided up into the three centres as well. So everything's law of three. Everything has um, come from the thinking, feeling, moving centres. And it's whether we've got them all in balance that we can then work on things harmoniously. When they're out of balance, we're being either a one-brained or a two-brained person. Which is why pondering helps with this kind of thing. And I'm going to just do some quick more quotes because it says here, where was it? So we're continuing with not here, Charles Knott. As has been said, a man should spend half or at least a third of his life in pondering. Help Donis stands in relation to the assimilation of foods as pondering stands in relation to impressions. A man must make an effort to resolve the struggle between affirmation and denial, or else the impression goes not to essence, but just to his store of information. And this is all part of the pondering process. If you're pondering, it won't just go to the store of information. It will start working around in all them centres and then reach essence, which is what we're trying to bring out, is our essence. See previous shows. Not continues. In other words, pondering is the neutralising force of thought. Interesting, eh? Without this, the organism is left with only positive and negative deposits. Pondering is the weighing of ideas. It should include clarity. And that's one of the things which is quite difficult and I do see other people are striving for and I myself do is clarity clarity of what we're thinking feeling sensing clarity of what we is we're trying to understand and with so much we have we are bombarded with different thought ideas we're bombarded with different people's philosophies we've been bombarded with let's say fake news and real news and people who want to make the real news fake and the fake news real and all that you know it can be quite confusing People want to be told what to believe when really we should be working it out for ourselves. What do we believe in? What is it that's when we're watching, I don't know, some chat on YouTube, do we feel that it's um, ringing true for you? And if, or is there that niggling feeling of mm, something's not quite right about this? You know, I fall for these things on myself all the time. I'm easily led, you know, easily like to be told what to do. And you're caught up in that school programming of, we are told what to do rather than we can think for ourselves. And the Gurdjieff work helps us to learn to think for ourselves, to feel for ourselves, to ascertain for ourselves, to ponder. 
you know we don't really want to be told what to do well we do actually we're lazy beings we want to be told what to think told what to do but people that are awake don't we we go and learn from others but then we figure it out for ourselves we ponder on it ourselves i'm just going to carry on with them um, so not says notes in the thinking scale so we're talking about the octave yeah soul is concentration la meditation c is contemplation that each is still a process of thought in which the emotional may enter and it must be present in pondering which is motivated by the emotional center by the personal relation to the subject pondered pondering is essential thinking pondering is establishing values by weighing otherwise there is only clarity and logic what is weighed in pondering is inclination and disinclination as opposed to thinking in which ideas and concepts are weighed and yeah that's kind of like what i was saying before i continued the quote we've got to weigh up what we're hearing seeing viewing taking part in to work out what we believe in what we don't believe in what is good for us and helps us with our evolution and what is devolving us what is leading us astray you know, this, and what, once we start pondering on these things we begin to oh, reach our higher self we're connecting with the divine hopefully and then you know that that the divine and the higher self is guiding us maybe subtly <laughs> i was going to say actually yeah, i just say it. Sometimes I think I am here in my higher self, and I wonder if it's just <laughs> the dark forces trying to lead me astray. But again, it's all down to what we're feeling and thinking. What do we know is right? And sometimes then instincts are quite subtle, which is why we need to ponder on these things. And not says, pondering is the assimilation of the third food asking after contemplation, what am I? The transfer of the note C of the thinking octave to Do of the pondering octave. Pondering is thinking with the emotional center. It's thinking sub-center, which is in the thinking center. As I was saying earlier, there's also an emotional side of thinking. So hopefully that emotional side of thinking will hook up with the emotional center as well and help us to understand what it is we're pondering. This sub-center, center is said to be the most highly developed of the sub-centers not knowing the creator's purpose the meaning and aim of existence those objective values are matter for pondering pondering is an activity proper to being so not been telling all this by oraj but it is you know very important about what the creator's purpose is or who the creator is i've said this before in shows and trying to encourage people to go and find out what it is you really believe in what do you think is a divine source or is there a divine source? What is, you know, the creator's story to you or how did humanity came to be on this earth? It's very important as part of your understanding and philosophy of why you're here on this planet and who you are and what your aim is. You know, the story of humanity and the reason for it to be here is very important and should be part of your understanding in your development and in your soul path and your you know you should be pondering of such things like that as well you know naraj reminds us understanding is developed not only by pondering but by handling situations practically as a good gardener manages his, his garden you know like we're being the gardener of our our garden our bodies our souls you know we've got to manage them properly we need to know when to water them when to give them extra nutrients when to uh, you know the winter's coming how to protect them through the winter season summer's here is what's your soul bloom kind of thing obviously i'm using metaphors here but we're working on our soul all the time so some quotes from all and everything about pondering Sorry, just picked up the wrong book. So, page 290 of All in Everything. That ordinary cosmic something, which is in general always actualized of itself for every cosmic unit, and which serves for beings with objective reason 
as is what is called an issuing source for pondering about the explanation of the sense and meaning of any given cosmic result. Any given cosmic result, that's anything and everything that happens in this planet to you, you know, to your within your vicinity of whatever you're doing. You have to ponder on what is happening, the who's, where's, why's and how's of it. And let it um, mentate inside you, you know, which is all Gurdjieff talks about mentation all the time. When we're mentating all this. I don't know if that's the right word, mentation, mentating, but it's all about your mentation. And he says also on page 330 of All and Everything, such a nonsensical literal understanding proceeds in them always owing to the fact that they have entirely ceased to produce in their common presences part dull duty, which should be actualized by being efforts, which in their turn alone crystallize data for the capacity of genuine being pondered, pondering. That's what we're working towards, the genuine being pondering. I've done shows on um, your part dog duty, so you can go back and look at that. You know, it's all about the, the golden rule and such like. We want to be working with everyone, thinking about everyone, working on ourselves at the same time and pondering. You know, like I'm pondering now, you can see I'm kind of lost in thought because I'm trying to think, where am I going with this sentence? But that just shows that at the time, at the moment, I'm not fully centred. I'm not fully aware of what I'm doing. Though I'm trying to be. <laughs> We're pondering so that all the energies assimilate in us. And we can work out an aim towards truth, which is the most important thing for our development, is finding truth. And I was saying earlier, I just remember why I had this subquote earlier about how school taught me to be told what to think. And I'm sure many of you have been to schools that told you, went, told you what to think. I'm not talking Gurdjieff schools here, I'm talking about, you know, our schools as we're growing up as children, our universities and our colleges, they tell us what to think. We're not allowed to think for ourselves. Where the Gurdjieff works changing all that so that we can think for ourselves. And he says here, in um, All and Everything, page 1212. This system of education has resulted in the gradual loss in people of the capacity to ponder and reflect upon what they are talking about and upon what is being said to them. Isn't that true? Our system that we live in, especially the Western world, does not like to let us think for ourselves. You know, that's the controllers wanting to control. And if we can think for ourselves, we can see through the, uh, the facade of what's going on, the facade of what's going on. We can see through the vow. We can even see, as Gurdjieff says, life is real only then when I am. And they don't want us to be real, the controllers. Which is why I often talk about we need to stand back from the material world, the secular world that wants to tell us what to think we work on ourselves first so that we're ready to go out and live our life the way we want to with freedom and truth i'm just going to finish with one more quote from views from the real world which i've been really going through this last few months i love it if a man knows how to be mercilessly sincere with himself then to the question what are you he will not expect a comforting reply so I've finished this show. Thank you for watching. But I'm asking you to ponder on the questions of what are you? Who are you? Why are you here? And what's your connection to the divine source? Love and peace to you all. Thank you for watching and keep on pondering, pondering, pondering everything. <laughs>